and those large muscle skills. And the most obvious one that comes to mind um, when it comes to your six month old baby is the ability to roll in all directions. If you've been following us, then you'll know that Ainsley actually has a little bit of a gross motor delay. So this activity, I'm getting straight from her physical therapist. So to practice rolling over, we're gonna start the baby on one side of the room. We'll start over here and lay them down. You're going to assist the baby in rolling over. That means pulling her knees up tight to her chest and flipping her over. And then we'll take that leg that's on top, a little bit of slight pressure, just push her knee to the ground so her torso starts to turn. Now Ainsley here is gonna finish the rest. Now to help her with the roll from the belly to the back, we're gonna take this outer arm, the direction that we're gonna be flipping, and we're gonna tuck it in. Tuck it in and I'm gonna, I'm gonna push her body just a little bit and she'll do the rest. When we do this activity, we're gonna do it over and over and over so that she can get a sense of that motion and be able to start anticipating what that rolling feeling feels like. So let's give it a try. Knees up and turn. There you go, arms in and turn. Knees up and turn. Arms in and turn. Knees up and turn. Our next gross motor milestone that we're gonna be working on is reaching in a sitting position. Gaining that core strength right here. We're gonna lean out to the side. I'm gonna tilt her hips, and that encourages her to stick that arm out right there. Reach. There you go. Oh, you're so strong. Keep going. That was a lot of hard work. So we're going to be working on some fine motor milestones. Fine motor is anything that has to do with really small precise movements, so most particularly in the hands. So this first activity we're gonna be doing for fine motor is gonna be working on what's called the radial grasp. So that's when kids use just their thumb, <laughs> index finger, and middle finger to grasp things. We're gonna do that by having small objects for her to grasp, and we're gonna encourage her to grasp using these three fingers. We have three objects for Ainsley to grasp. She's working on the big one right now, and you can see when she grabbed it, she used the thumb, index finger, and middle finger. We're gonna encourage her to do that by helping to guide her hand so that she can grab with those fingers. You can also do it by grasping the object first and offering it to that part of her hand so that she really just kind of clamps down with the thumb, index finger, and middle finger. Yay, Ainsley! <laughs> the next fine motor skill we're gonna be working on is gonna be clapping. Most kids start to clap anywhere between six months and nine months old. So if your child hasn't started clapping yet, it's a great skill to work toward. We're just gonna be doing some activities to encourage them to start trying to clap. We're going to be modeling how to clap for your baby. So you want to make sure you get your baby's attention. Ainsley, Ainsley, hello. <gasps> Look. Ooh. Clap, clap, clap. After modeling, encourage your child to clap along. Ready? <gasps> clap, 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 clap. <gasps> clap, clap, clap. Can you clap, Ainsley? Your child may also love the idea of holding on to your fingers while you clap. Clap, 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 clap. Now we're gonna move on to those social emotional goals, which are the goals related to the way that they interact with themselves and others. So our first social emotional goal is baby begins to interact with themselves in the mirror. Huh. You love your friend in the mirror. At the 
ground level for babies so that they can interact with themselves during play. Hi, Ainsley. It's so nice to have a friend. Now our next social emotional goal might surprise you. At this age, it is perfectly reasonable to start setting limits. So our next social emotional goal is starting to understand the word no. It's a social emotional goal because your baby learns to recognize the word no also based on your facial expressions and tone. Yeah. <laughs> No. You want to be clear and firm in your tone, while at the same time avoiding harshness and anger while addressing undesirable behavior. The next set of milestones we're going to be working toward are the cognitive milestones. So these are any milestones having to do with the development of your child's brain, and specifically how they think. The first milestone we're going to be working toward is your child may begin to start examining objects for a really long time. The activity we're going to be doing is having Ainsley examine a lot of objects that are similar but have some very stark differences. We have all these balls set out to examine. They all have very different colors and textures and of course sizes. And you just want to encourage your child to explore. Give her the chance to really pick them up and and feel their different textures. The next cognitive milestone we're gonna be working toward is that your child may begin to understand their own name. So you'll want to get your child engaged in another activity, and when their attention is not on you, call their name and then celebrate when they look at you. Ainsley. Yay! Good job, girlfriend. Ainsley. You really want to emphasize that celebration so that they begin to internalize their own name. Our next area of development is going to be speech, which is anything that has to do with their receptive or expressive Ooh. vocabulary. Ooh. And at six months old, you are looking for your baby to have repetitive babbling, which is the same sound over and over again. At this age, you'll see a lot of ma 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 and dad dad dads and ba ba ba. You can encourage this by imitating the sounds that your baby is making and also encouraging her to imitate you. Now we're gonna be working on some sensory milestones. These are specifically milestones where your child is growing and developing their hearing, their eyesight, or their sense of touch. The first sensory milestone we're gonna be working for is that your child at six months old may start to change their perspective. They might start to look at objects from all different perspectives, really trying to understand the entirety of that object. So the first activity we're going to be doing is moving your child around a large object or toy to help them to see it from all different perspectives. The toy we're using is this giant stuffed dinosaur and we're just going to be moving your child around the toy to help them to see it from all different perspectives and all different angles. Ooh. Ah, look, do you see the dinosaur? Let's look at it from over here. Maybe we'll look at it from above, upside down. Oh, do you see the dinosaur? Isn't it so fun? The idea is to really help them to see it from all different perspectives. The next activity we're going to be doing to work toward that sensory milestone is that we're going to be helping Ainsley to move and manipulate an object in all different directions. We're going to do that by handing her her pinky, but we're going to hand it to her upside down or backwards or sideways so that she has to manipulate it in order to try to get it into her mouth. So you're going to hand your child the baby and make sure it's not just directly pointed to it. You almost got it. You're close. This activity can be done with any toy. A binky is just really helpful if your child uses a binky because it has to be oriented a certain way for it to go into their mouth. Say bye bye. 
Thank you so much for joining us today and walking through all of these developmental milestones. It's also really important to talk about your child's six month well child check with your pediatrician. At six months, your pediatrician is going to be very interested in these milestones and they're going to be looking for specific red flags. Some of those red flags include if your child is excessively stiff when they move, or excessively floppy. Another red flag is if your child does not reach out to objects that are within reach. Another red flag would be if your child doesn't roll over in either direction. Another red flag would be if your child doesn't seem to connect with their primary caregiver. At any age, a concerning red flag would be if your child is continually missing milestones that they should be hitting or especially if they start to lose skills that they once had. My reasoning for pointing out these red flags is not to scare you. It's to educate you so you know what to be on the watch for. If you see any of these red flags, talk to your pediatrician about it. That being said, thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that like button. Also make sure you click on that bell so you can get notifications anytime we post a new video. We would also love to hear what you are doing with your child to help them grow and develop. Thank you again for watching our video. We hope you have a great week. Love ya. <laughs>